Hi everybody, welcome to Livewire Review. Today we have a 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Ford F-150 Lightning Lariat. And to be frank, we're standing here like, what do we do? What do we do? What do yeah. we do? So what are we I don't about? think this is gonna be a comparison today, is it? It's How do you compare be... a pickup truck and, and, a, and a Mustang Mach-E? Uh, you don't, you don't. The two different worlds, two different products, two different everythings. So I think uh, let's wait for our coffee to brew and then we'll come up with an idea. Yeah. Let's get going. Okay. Okay, Matt, I think I had an idea. Okay. What if you bought both? What if you bought both? Yeah. Okay. You got the small SUV for the family road trips. You can put ice in it. You can do tailgate parties. And you got the truck to pick up everything from Home Depot. Can I call that a sports car for my midlife crisis though? Of course, especially if you get the GT. All right. All right, we're waiting on this coffee to brew, and then let's get going on some features up front here. Yeah, you want a cup? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, it's nice and fresh. And we got the cream over here on ice. <laughs> there we go. The features available. Oh, I love this. You can put ice two. in the Mach-E, you can drain it out, <laughs> and you got the power plugs on I the mean, truck. Two, Fresh cup of coffee. 2.4 kilowatts worth of power up front here, not to mention the fact that I think it's up to four, four, to four different things we can run at once in here. Yeah, that's four plugs. Exactly. So, I mean, I, we've done this before. We've run a ton of different stuff, but I mean, the coffee maker is essential for the thought process, right? There's even USB cables up here. <laughs> now on the flip side though, what do you get in the front of that? Unfortunately, there Besides is no the, power outlets in the Mach-E. Besides but, the fancy dancy drain to uh, drain all our ice out of there. Yeah, this one's been set up <laughs> for the tailgate party. So everybody's gonna put their case of beer, their pop, whatever you need in there. <laughs> so we just got the charging cable out of the trunk of the Mach-E and I gotta say, another company has gotten this one right. We have a 1450 plug on here, so you can just go home and plug it into your 240 volt outlet right out of the gate. And they've taken an approach from Tesla where they have adaptable heads, so we can put the 120 volt on there as well. <laughs> we are about to try something I've always wanted to do. We've got the charging cable plugged into the F-150 Lightning. I'm gonna see if we can charge this Mach-E with it. You should be able to. Should be able to charge it right up. We are charging. We have an F-150 Lightning charging a Mach-E Oh, there it right is, up. there it is, now it woke up, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so there's even a 240 volt outlet in the back. If you had the right plug hooked up on here, you'd actually be able to go and rescue somebody stuck on the side of the road. So I see a lot of utility in this truck that you can use it for. It's pretty cool. So let's start with the Mach-E and I mean, this is an awesome product that Ford has really brought out. I mean, it brings the best of both that kind of small crossover SUV mixed with, like I said before, that midlife crisis sports car feel. Um, tons of power, tons of features. And I mean, it's awesome because if you can complement your lifestyle with the fun to drive sporty car that still takes everything that you need it to do with the large utility vehicle, you get the best of both worlds, literally. All under one, you know, blue oval banner. That's true, and you know what? I wore my Mustang shirt just for this occasion because I love Mustangs. My last car was actually a 2016 Mustang GT. So <laughs> this is an interesting choice they went with by making it a crossover. However, in my stage of life, this is very handy. It gives me four wheel drive and I can fit all the kids in the back a lot easier than I could in the car. Well, the Mach-E has been out for about a couple of years now. They did add something new for 2023. If you go for the more base trim, they're offering a lithium iron phosphate battery. Again, this is not exciting things to talk about, but if you buy a lithium iron phosphate battery, it means that you can charge it to 100% every day and you don't have to worry about degradation. You get about 2,500 plus charging cycles out of the lithium iron phosphate. So it's just something that you can live with. Yeah, it's a lot of power. It's a lot of power, which is awesome. And I mean, the fact that it takes the guesswork out of it, you don't, I mean, I, mean, I think this will appeal to 
the people that aren't as up on it and aren't as early adopter as far as EV goes. And you're going to hear that and you're going to go, oh, cool. I just plug it in and I don't think about it. And that always appeals to the masses, I think is the best thing to say. It appeals to me. Yeah. I like not thinking. I like just going, all right, cool. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Well, that and when you go to replace <laughs> the battery, it's actually cheaper. That is yeah. also a giant bonus because as these things roll out, everybody's terrified. What's it going to cost? What's it going to cost? Well, if we can make it cheaper, make it more affordable, make it more accessible, more people will do it. Exactly. Okay, I'm always the one who talks about the batteries because I find this most interesting. Um, Ford has not gone for a heat pump in their vehicles. Both the F-150 Lightning and the Mach-E are using a resistive heater. Now, it's not really much of a problem because Ford has chosen to use very, very large batteries to make up for that. So even in cold weather, a Chevy Bolt, for example, you might only get 60% of the range when it's really cold out. But because the batteries are so large in this, I would estimate you probably still get 80% of your range because you're gonna use about three kilowatts per hour. And we're over here with the F-150 Lightning. Again, this vehicle uses a resistive heater just like the Mach-E does, but this one has a significantly larger battery. This one is 131 kilowatt hours. I'll throw the ranges up on the screen just so you get an idea of the difference between these two vehicles. Okay, we're at the back of the Mach-E now, and this is a crossover as we know, so you get a very, very large trunk. And underneath this parcel shelf, it actually holds itself up. You get extra space down here. And when you take these things out, you get even more space. I'll throw it up on the screen how much space you have in the back of these cars. And as usual, seats fold down in a 60-40 split as you would expect. So in this dream garage that we're building over here on the F-150 Lightning, they really paid attention to, you know, we're not building an EV truck, we're building a truck and we want it to still appeal to the same guys that bought the F-150, 250, 350s, whatever you might have bought. So they've really done a great job with that. You've got all the same features that you know and love from your F-150. My personal favorite, that absolutely elegant little step so that you can get in and out of this thing. It's so simple, but so cool. Now, one cool thing they've added though are a lot of contractor related features here. So you've got two different gradients on here that can show you both in inches and in millimeters, you can measure out boards, cut stuff. You even got spots to put clamps or different accessories if you want to work back here, in addition to different holders and different measuring items for daily contractor type use. Now, this one is not lined, bare metal bed, but I mean, spray in bed liners or whatever you might use, something, because I wouldn't personally run an empty bed like this. But this is where you get really cool with the lightning because you've got all that power on board. We've got a 240 plug, and then we have four additional 120s there. And I mean, pro power on board be damned, this thing will power your house. Forget just running a generator or a welder. This thing's got enough juice to get you out of an emergency situation. Now beyond that, I mean, this is not the longest bed in the world. I do wish they brought this product out with an eight foot bed, but that's a me complaint. I'm always kind of more function over fashion. Now, what else do you get back here? LED lighting, if you're loading this thing up at night, uh, extra lights up top to light everything up. And you've got four tie down points up high as well as four rigid tie down points down low really gives you options depending on what you want to transport in this bed. But Matt, can you fit an ATV back here? <clears throat> I think with the tailgate down, I could fit an ATV back here. Oh, most likely. And there's no tonneau cover in your way either. There is no tonneau cover in your way either, which is a good thing. Unlike the Hyundai where the tonneau cover would get in the way and I can't put anything back here. And I think we can get a few uh, home projects done with these uh, power back here, even if the power goes out. Absolutely, you can run everything with this thing. Okay, as usual, we're gonna do a backseat test on both of these cars. They are family vehicles, and we have to see if tall adults will fit in the back seat. Okay, this is actually my first time in the back seat of a Mach-E. It is half an inch from my head, but I do fit. Again, six foot one inches tall, just barely fit in the back seat, but it is comfortable. I have lots of room in front of me. They have a nice arch to the seats, which gives you room. And unlike the Aria, my feet actually fit underneath the seat. All right, so let's have a look at the back seat room here on the Lightning. I mean, this isn't gonna come as a shock. There's lots of room. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, I am just an absolute hair under six foot. I've got lots of headroom and that is with the large two panel sunroof. I can pretty much put my legs almost out straight if I really tried there. Um, yeah, tons of space back here. I also love that I do get a rear heated seat as well as some charging options back here, a 120 volt as well as some USBs. And I mean, what's in the middle here? Oh, a nice fancy cup holder and center console. Yeah. 
I also do like that they carry the audio system through the back too, so I can enjoy from the back seat. That's nice. Well, we're inside the Mach-E now, and we're greeted with a very, very large touchscreen. I believe this is over 15 inches tall, and what I really like is there is a physical volume knob. This is something that I've always looked for in a car, and I always got upset when they didn't have it. Yeah, and I've got a fully digital instrument cluster here, range on the left, speed on the right, as well as a bunch of other options. I also do like that they've kept a physical shifter down here. I have the wheel, I have to roll it to a different gear position gives me some options. Now, as far as the interior on this vehicle in general goes, I like that they've broken it up with the different materials. You're getting that soft touch, almost carpet up here. And then you've got like that carbon fiber-esque mixed with the leather and the stitching. Like they, they left no, st and piano black. They've left no stone unturned here. They've gone to every automotive staple all in one vehicle. And I kind of appreciate that. Well, what else am I seeing? Massive sunroof, oh, which I didn't notice until right now. It did not partition at all. It's one piece of glass. Yeah. Oh, now, this glass goodness. does not open. It no. is just a panoramic glass. No. Here, when you go to the GT models, they actually, um, they all come with this. There is no sheet metal roof. Yeah. Check that out. Massive piece of glass up there. That's really cool. I mean, you have the panoramic roof in the F-150, but it is split down the middle. And I mean... Everything else you want in a car. And again, this one also always jumps out at me as they kept it very Mustang. If you got out of the same model year production 5 liter or any of the other versions of this Mustang and got into this, you're like, oh, it's a Mustang. Awesome. Let's go. Which that, I have owned one, and it does have exactly the same switch gear. Yep. To be honest, this little, uh, this little handle here to release the door kind of messed me up at first i thought it was my window switch i pulled it down and i went oh nope my door is now open okay then but it's much better than the teslas because you don't have just a button you have a physical latch and i know we all like that that's fair well why don't we use them and we'll go uh hop in the lighting and see what's different or yeah. what's the same just one last thing i wanted to talk about in here the premium materials they use now i know ford will only use premium materials where you can see it but where you touch it feels really nice to your hands hmm soft touch <laughs> <laughs> okay off to the lightning okay as we start up my seat is moving forward my steering wheel came to exactly where i wanted it so this has memory seats three positions actually that's, that's awesome. pretty interesting and same thing you're greeted by this monster screen now i'm just eyeballing it it is the same screen it has the volume knob all the same sizes and dimensions you get a and couple it, other physical buttons down here which is interesting and if you press here it changes it to the climate so you can move the fan with that physical knob that's awesome and then down here i've got a couple extra physical buttons the one thing we're getting over here i mean obviously this is truck versus car here but you do have your integrated trailer brake controller as well as your pro trailer backup assist both really cool ford features <laughs> this one i always like uh, will it go if it's i press oh right it's that here. one it's i was pressing one. the wrong button yes hide away she now, don't and i'll then, be honest i love this console but one thing i really <laughs> want to see in pickup trucks again is six seats i have a large family and i would like to be able to fit them all in one vehicle this is an excellent family vehicle because we can fit all the car seats in the back but you can still only fit five passengers ford bring back six seats i want to see the bench seat again the bench seat would be cool to see again and then same as we mentioned before you do get that huge panoramic sunroof up there but this one does have the partition but this one also opens so you can crank that open if you want while you're cruising wow that's actually massive that's a very big sunroof yeah now the one thing i am seeing over here that i didn't see in the Mach-E is we're getting some charging up front which is always nice oh, we've got another a 120 AC port we've got a 120 right there a 20 amp plug as well as a 12 volt and i'm sure if i look around there they are we've got usb as well as wireless now that was also in the Mach-E, but it wasn't so well labeled and i mean massive amounts of room up here remember i climbed in behind jeremy there in the back seat he hasn't really moved that seat at all and i can still see that it's huge i can still fit back there my god and i mean that's what you want that's what you want in the truck that's what you're buying and again this is when you boil down to oh let's take the big vehicle with everybody packed into it and go for a ride yeah and if you keep everything under a tonneau cover back there it's not even going to affect your range yeah all right, so we're getting down to the end of this one, and I think the cool thing here with this comparison is it's not a comparison. As, as you titled it off the top, it is the dream garage. It is the, you know, everyday fun to drive and the, uh-oh, I got to go fix the deck on the weekend mobile, and you get the best of everything. I mean, you know, are you going to jump right into two brand new Ford EVs? 
Probably not, especially when you're looking at a sticker price of over 110,000 over there on the Lightning and probably close to about 80. This is a used model, so we do know that that's about 70,000. Speaking of used models, thanks today to Bourgeois Ford in Midland, Ontario for providing these two vehicles. Give them a call if you're interested in this or that. They're both available for sale. Continuing on, you're not going to dive right into these two models. However, if you were to pick as the Dream Garage, you can't get better than these two, realistically. Yeah, and it's funny, I'm a Mustang guy, so you'd figure that I would pick the Mustang up front, but the utility of the F-150 Lightning has just got me floored. You can fit three car seats in the back of this vehicle very easily. It's gonna be efficient because it's an EV, despite the fact that it's so big, and you can fit everything in it. You can go camping, you can power your house, I'm sold on the Lightning. This is the one that I would choose, despite the fact that I should probably take both of them home. <laughs> See, I've, I love the Lightning. I've driven the Lightning. I've spent some time with the Lightning. I've worked, towed trailers, done all that fun stuff. So when I, when I get my hands on something like this, I'm like, let's go have some fun. And yeah. I, think, I think that's the point of today, is Ford really has you covered no matter what angle you're looking for. Now, what's amazing is both of these vehicles can tow a trailer. I don't think we even touched on that, did we? No, that's fair. You can tow with the truck, you can tow with the car. Here, we'll throw the tow rating up here. And I think on that note, uh, you know, go below. Let us know what you guys think. Would you pick the Mustang? Would you pick the Lightning? Or do you want both? Yeah, thanks for watching.